Welcome to NIOS. Today we are going to discuss about absorption, transport and water loss in plants. Water is essential for all life forms including plants. Plants absorb water through roots and move to other parts. Several phenomena are involved in movement of water. These phenomena are permeability, diffusion, osmosis and plasmolysis. Now what is permeability? Permeability is a property of cell to allow the passage of substance through it. All biological membranes except cuticle of plant cell are selectively permeable. Selectively permeable membranes allow penetration of only solvent molecules but not the solute molecules. Plant cell wall is permeable as it allows both solvent and solute. Now what is diffusion? Diffusion is also another process to make the plant roots absorb water. Diffusion is the intermingling of molecules of the same or different substances as a result of their random movement. Basically, the process of diffusion is dependent on the difference in concentration of molecules of different substances in the adjacent areas and this difference is called as diffusion gradient. Diffusion is an effective method of transport of matter over short distances. Unlike osmosis, diffusion does not require any membrane. If any membrane remains present, it should be fully permeable. Osmosis is different than diffusion in a way because it needs a membrane. Osmosis is a special kind of diffusion, you can say, of water molecules from a region of higher concentration to their region of low concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. When pure water is separated from a solution by a semi-permeable membrane, pure water tends to enter the solution by the process of osmosis. The maximum pressure required to prevent the osmotic entry of water in a solution where the concentration of water in a solution is low as compared to that in pure water. That is called as osmotic pressure. Osmosis may result into swelling or shrinkage of cell when placed in a solution. Sometimes no change in cell takes place because of relative concentration of water. So how diffusion is different from osmosis? Diffusion is the movement of substance from the place of higher concentration to the lower concentration. And osmosis also is a movement of water. But diffusion can take place in any medium like solids, liquids and gases. But osmosis occurs only in liquid medium. Another point of difference is osmosis requires a semi-permeable membrane to occur. Here is an illustration how osmosis takes place in plant cell. If the outside solution is more concentrated, then osmosis will take place from the cell to the outside membrane. That is also called as exosmosis. In this, in this illustration, you can see three figures. One is in isotonic solution, another one is hypotonic solution, and other one is hypotonic solution. Now, what is the difference between these three solutions? Three types of solutions are isotonic solution, hypertonic solution, and hypotonic solution. Hypotonic solutions are those solutions where the outside has lower solute concentration than inside the cell. In hypertonic solution, the solution outside has higher solute concentration than inside the cell. And in isotonic solution, the solution has same concentration of water and solutes as inside the cell. So how imbibation takes place and what is its importance? Imbibation is a process which accounts for only when solid plant material like dry wood, dead or living air dried seeds comes in contact with water. In case of living dry seeds, water is initially adsorbed by imbibation 
and thereafter water entering into the inner tissue is absorbed by osmosis. Because of imbibation, the wooden doors, sometimes we see wooden doors during the rainy season, we cannot close. Why this happens? Because during rainy season, it swell up and it becomes difficult to close the door. Imbibation and its importance, what is it? Dry seeds bear highly negative water potential when such seeds are brought in contact with water, imbibation process continues till the equilibrium is attained between contents of seed and water present outside. Imbibation is the initial step in the germination of seeds. It causes swelling of seeds and also breaking of seed coat. Here the illustration of plasmolysis, actually the plasmolysis and imbibition these are more or less interlinked. Whenever plasmolysis occurs, after that slide there is the content, you can see why the cells swell or shrink. If a cell is placed in a hypertonic solution, water from the cell move out resulting in shrinkage of the protoplasm in the center of the cell. This happens because of the phenomena of plasmolysis. And plasmolysis is a physical phenomena. If I say diffusion, osmosis, plasmolysis, all are physical phenomena. A cell can become plasmolyzed and deplasmolyzed depending upon the concentration of the outer solution in which the cell is placed. When a plasmolyzed cell is placed in a hypotonic or a dilute solution of pure water, water moves into the cell causing the protoplasm to stretch and get back to its original shape. That is called as deplasmolysis. When a cell is placed in isotonic solution or a solution with similar concentration as that of cell sap, no change in the shape of the protoplasm or the cell will take place. Here there is an illustration of the plasmolyzed cell. Here you can, you can see how the cell has shrinked against the cell wall. You can say the plasmolysis is a process of shrinkage of cell against the cell wall too. Now here I have given you some of the questions to test yourself. If you have any query, you can get back to us. Six questions, all are related to the content which already we have discussed. What is water potential? The potential energy of water is called as water potential. For example, water is stored behind the dam. When water is allowed to fall downhill, its potential energy is converted into electrical energy that all of us know. So the conversion occurs under the effect of gravity. Pressure also provides energy to water. Increase in pressure leads to increase in free energy, hereby increasing water potential. The measurement unit of water potential is Pascal. Water potential is represented by Greek letter that is called as psi. The value of water potential of a solution is less than that of pure water or zero, that is a negative number. Water potential determines the water status in plant cells and tissues. The lower the water potential in a plant cell or a tissue, the greater is its ability to absorb water. In a nutshell, all the solution has lower water potential. Pure water bears the highest value of water potential, that is zero. When solute is added to water, that means when you are going to make any solution, the value of water potential is lowered. Thus, all solutions are with negative water potential value. More the negative is the value of water potential, the greater the water depth which permits the rapid flow of water 
into the system. What is solute potential? Solute potential or osmotic potential is the amount by which the water potential is reduced as a result of the presence of solutes. Pressure potential is positive in contrast to negative value of water potential and the solute potential operates in plant cell in the form of wall pressure. What is target pressure? The plant cell when placed in pure water swells that already you have come across. When it swells it does not burst, always it does not burst because of the negative osmotic potential of the vacuolar solution. What is the vacuolar solution question may come up in your mind that is nothing but the cell sap. Water will move into the cell and will cause plasmolemma to pressed against the cell wall and the actual pressure that develops that is the pressure responsible for pushing the membrane against the cell wall and that is called as target pressure. It is very simple. Target pressure is the result of endosmosis and it allow the plant cell to stretch but do not allow the cell to burst. What is the advantage? Target pressure helps in maintaining the shape and form of the plant. The stems of herbaceous plants and the wands with no woody tissues like maize, sugarcane, etc are held straight by fully turgid cells packed tightly together. Tugger pressure holds the leaves in a flat and horizontal position. In addition to that, opening and closing of stomata is governed by turgidity and flaccidity of the GERD cells. How the water is essential and as you have gone through water is essential how this water becomes available in the soil. The soil contains water in three forms. One is gravitational water, next one is hydroscopic water, third one is capillary water. Basically the gravitational water is not generally available to plant roots as these, these water are deep into the soil. Hygroscopic water are the least available because the plants and the, they are generally left in the dry soils. But the available water is the capillary water. It is the water which is readily available and is easily utilized by the plant roots. Here the illustration of gravitational water, capillary water and the hygroscopic water. Water is available but how the plants absorb water? There are root hairs. Root contains hair which is specially modified epidermal cell meant for absorption of capillary water of the soil. Soil solution should have higher water potential as compared to root hair cell otherwise there will be no process of absorption. Hence water enter into the root cell, water movement into the plant follows two pathways. One is symplast pathway, another one is epoplast pathway. Epoplast pathway is the pathway where water moves exclusively through the cell wall without crossing any membranes. Symplast pathway is the pathway where water moves from one cell to another cell through plasmodesmata and transmembrane pathway is another pathway where water after passing through cortex is blocked by Casparian strips present on endodermis. The Casparian strips are formed due to deposition of wax like substance that is suberin. Here is a clear difference that has been drawn between epoplas pathway and symplas pathway. How the entry of water happens in epoplas pathway? Like you see water moves through the cell wall and intercellular spaces not to the cell sap in epoplast. But in symplas pathway water enters into the cell sap and pass from one cell to another along the concentration gradient. Speed of epoplast pathway is fast than the symplast pathway. 
and crossing of cell membrane does not occur in epoplast pathway whereas it occurs in symplast pathway. Here is the illustration of the symplast and epoplast pathway and also the, how the roots, root hairs absorb. They, here the areas of roots which are involved in absorption and translocation of water has been put in. How water movement takes place in plant? The content of xylem, all of us know xylem, these are the, this is the vascular system, xylem and phloem. Xylem is meant for the water movement, water and mineral salts absorption and to carry the water along with the mineral, water, mineral salts from the root to the top of the tree. The content of xylem vessel is known as the xylem sap. It is well known fact that water rises upwards in the plant through xylem and this happens because of root pressure. The root pressure is said to be active process which is confirmed by some of the facts. These facts are living cells, these are essential in root for the root pressure to develop otherwise there will be no root pressure, death cell cannot create any pressure. Second, oxygen supply and some metabolic inhibitors affect the root pressure. Third, mineral accumulation because along with the water, water current, mineral salts also is absorbed by the root hairs. So mineral accumulation by active absorption lowers the water potential of surrounding cells leading to entry of water in those, into the cells because as you have gone through water potential becomes low if any solute concentration comes in the water. So how the transpiration occurs? If there is an absorption there must be a loss also, loss of water also. Transpiration occurs because of the num enormous number of moist walls of mesophyll cells. This mesophyll cell in leaf lose water vapor through stomatal and cuticular transpiration. Due to loss of water from mesophyll cells in the leaf, diffusion pressure deficit increases or water potential decreases in the mesophyll cells. The cell sap of mesophyll cells get concentrated by losing water and hence water is sucked from adjoining cells and ultimately from vascular tissue. This transpiration pull cohesion theory says about the tension is transmitted all the way down to the unbroken column of water through the stem to absorbing parts of the root. Column of water in the xylem is maintained by cohesive force between the water molecules. Here there is an illustration which tells you the path of water through the plant and the various physical forces that are concerned by water movement. What is bleeding and guttation? Transpiration is the process of water loss in the form of water vapor through stomata and also cuticle and lenticel which we will uh, study in our next session. So bleeding is the exudation of sap, water that means so what is sap? This is water along with the dissolved organic and inorganic substances from the injured parts of the plant. That is exudation of latex is the case of bleeding. In herbaceous plants when root pressure is high and transpiration is low, plants may lose the extra water in liquid drops from merging of the leaves. While transpiration is a loss of water from a plant in the form of water vapor, the loss in the form of liquid is called as guttation. Guttation is a liquid form of water loss and transpiration is the gaseous form of water loss. Here again there is a question time for you all. All the questions are based on the content which already you have gone through. I hope you will be able to do all these questions and if you have any queries you can come to us. Thank you.